uh, replaced Keisha with Cinnamon oh. today. Yeah. Um, she's no longer with us. Surprise, guys. After that me. prank last episode, I um, oh. kick her out, obviously. Um, no. Sorry about that. So today, welcome back to another episode of Quite Entertaining. Today is all about phobias and fears and all that kind of stuff. So do you have a fear? A pho- oh. Like a proper phobia? I actually don't think I do. Like, I can't think of anything I'm genuinely scared of. Neither. I don't think I've, like, a, like phobia of anything. I just, yeah. like, generally, like, I, I saw this thing where sometimes, like, you're, you're not scared of the actual thing, but you're, like, afraid of what could go wrong with it. Mm. Like, if you have a fear of, like, like deep water or something, it's like you're not afraid of the water, you're afraid of drowning or that's, something like, you know? Wow, that's so I feel like Yeah, I feel like <laughs> that might be, like, you know, I'm afraid of what could go wrong. It's yeah. It's my thing. Yeah, I just, like, scared of dying you know yeah, accidentally dying accidentally dying <laughs> anyways today yeah. we're not going to be getting too deep into all the phobias yeah. it's more about the weird and wacky ones that we found on the our, interesting ones yes on our internet little adventures but at the start of every episode what do we do the national today so yes. today is national uh, siblings day oh um good for me i have a sister you uh, I, I don't have any so yeah not really my day today but then today's also a national hug your dog day <gasps> cinnamon <laughs> Please he hold. just ignored you. It's National Hug Your Dog Day. <laughs> Let's pretend that that happened first time. Yeah. Anyways, and then today's also uh, Golfers Day. Oh, yeah. And I, I have a question for you. And if yeah. you get this right, I have a present for you. Oh, a little okay. prize. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Can you guess what year golf was invented? That's so broad. <laughs> what? That's... I'll give you within five years e- either side. Nineteen. 19- Fifth, nineteen fifty five. Nineteen fifty five. Yeah, you're close. It was seventeen forty four. I should. That's like. Yeah. That was your second guess. It's yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I was either going for like you know recent like nineteen something or like you know it's like ancient. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But like, mm, yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna mind. give you the prize. Anyway. Yes, because it ties on to the next national today. Can I so, open it? Yeah, open it. Oh. It's a paper clip. Safety pin. Oh, it's a safety pin. <laughs> it's so it's yeah, safety pin. In honor now. of National Safety Pin Day. Should I pin it on me? Yeah. So you know, that's my gift for you. Um, and do you want to know a little bit about National Safety yeah, Pin Day? Yeah, go. So the safety pin was invented in 1849 by Walker Hunt. Oh. Who then died ten years later. So I'm guessing he must have thought he peaked it safety pin and decided. yeah did he poke himself is that how he does that <laughs> maybe maybe, maybe but yeah he thought you know can't top that may as well just you know yeah. yep anyways and so there's different uses i found for safety pin oh, on, okay. on the yeah. internet so they're used by punk rock people in the 1970s as earrings and body pieces oh yeah yeah, yeah body pieces that. um they used to fight off evil spirits um how? Like, put inside children's oops. clothes to fight off evil spirits in ukraine oh okay. yeah so that's another use and then they have some myths attached to them. Apparently, oh. uh, safety pins are pinned close to pregnant women's bellies as it's thought to protect the child in Mexico. You <laughs> take this off. <laughs> you have any news for us, Keisha? I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that off and leave that there. And then yeah. the last use I found, interesting use, is that they pass on social and political messages. Oh. So they're worn by women to fight harassment in India and support oh. immigrants in okay. England. Yeah, following the 2016 election. So. They're also used to, you know, hold together clothes when they're too big for you. Whoosh. All right, so next what we're going to be doing is a little game. Let's what we've go. done is we found a random phobia for each other. And yes. we're going to just, I'm just going to give you the name of the phobia. You're going to know nothing about it. Okay. And then you're going to tell me. You're going to market it like okay. you're an expert. You're going phobia. first? Like, um, I'll in... give you one first. Okay, so are you just going to, okay. okay. All right, your phobia is plutophobia. It's okay. It's not a fear of Pluto or something, even though it sounds like it. Okay, basically, mm-hmm. wait. Let me just like first. Let me just like think. Just you just gotta go back. Like, yeah. Just yeah. Let off. me just like remember what it is. Yeah, because you're you're an expert in. You, yeah, I, I know you. I just know so many that I have to figure out which one it is first. Or you just got to figure out the best part. Yeah, of and how to explain it to everyone. You yeah, know? you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Basically, so you know, like with planets right mm. how you have like gas planets and then you have like rocky planets yeah right so the plutophobia is like the fear of rocky planets mm. which is concerning because we live on one that is concerning you know yeah, that so would these be. people like they're like 
when you okay so you, they, kind of earth is masked by the fact that you know we've got all this sometimes people like psychologically forget that we're a rocky planet but yeah. like they'd much rather live on like jupiter or something yeah you yeah know? Because... because like you're free whereas like mars they ain't going to mars if they're because they're afraid of them it's like mm. the weird texture of it yeah and how it looks it's like the fear of like, like something so like strong and concrete as yeah, foundations that exactly. makes them like uneasy. mercury like what is what is mercury right and this brings us to the pluto bit right so mm. basically pluto not quite a planet anymore dwarf planet but it's like is it rocky maybe it's rocky. basically yeah so whatever it is that they're, they're, yeah. they're, they're just they're concerned with it and that's what sparks their fear of because why is it so far out but it's rocky when the others are gassy you know what yeah. i mean yeah so, so it's, it's like, like confusing and they just feel uncomfortable yeah. yeah yeah like and all the weird rocks and craters it just doesn't sit right yeah and so can you give us some statistics about plutophobia please? yeah so basically like so like i did a survey the other day actually so Ooh. i went around and asked people like would you prefer rock or gas planets pretty interesting question yeah. right yeah most people said gas and let me tell you why because please hold i just need to remember the data yeah yeah there's lots of people i think it was like 70 percent of people said gas planet just because it feels more comforting to them and then a few people were like, I don't, I wouldn't mind a rocky planet, but I think it was like 10, five to 10% of people were like, absolutely not. Mm. And then I asked them like, how would you feel because we're on earth? And then they just froze up because I think I triggered them in their mind to yeah. realize that they're on a rocky planet. And so then we had to leave the interview there. Yeah, but yeah. I think according to my research, there's about like, I don't know, a, co a couple of thousand I think mm -hmm. ten, tens of thousands, like in that kind of region yeah. in the world, that have this phobia. Yeah, so it's like you know yeah. it's prevalent. I know that you spoke to someone who has plutophobia yes. the other day. What, yes. What was their take on the whole phobia? Well, firstly, I scared them off after I you know told them yeah. about the whole Earth thing. Like Earth is a rock, guys. <laughs> but before that, they were just like the way that they were so like frustrated with it. Like they were, it's as if they were trying to like diss the planets or something. Mm. Like whoever they believed created it they were like why would you hate it but they were getting so defensive mm. about it like mm. it's a fear but it like instills anger in them yeah so that was pretty yeah yeah that must be hard living with such a you know prevalent hard, phobia yeah, yeah. Uh, and then they came to the realization about earth and i don't they're, know what happened to them they're now. quite quite literally stuck between a rock and a hard place oh they wouldn't oh, like that would they not, no. No. so yeah that's, that's everything you need to know about plutophobia um if you need more details, I mean, you can ask me. But yeah, that's that's, that's yeah. all I have to say. Yeah. That was insightful. Thank you for that. Um, awesome. yeah. Would you actually like to know what the fear is? <laughs> yeah, I really just went on the Pluto thing. <laughs> so, I don't even know if Pluto. Plutophobia is yes. the fear of money. <laughs> I think I just reversed that because <laughs> now this is hurting me. It's <laughs> people. Oh, fear of money. Fear of money. Um, so it's one of these phobias that can manifest as dread around money itself, the chance of getting rich or of wealthy people. Yeah. Like as in you're afraid of earning too much money or you're afraid of earning money at all? Because like too much money I get, like, you know, you're scared, what do I do with it? Like, how do, like will I be safe? But I think it's just all, money. Scared of money. You, you need money to live. I don't know. You're the expert. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, yeah. yeah. Maybe... American version versus Australian version. That was a little bit. Yeah, of a little bit. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Anyway. So, do you have one for me? Yeah, I do. All right. I just want you to first, like, pronounce this. Just because I don't know how to pronounce it. So yeah. I need you to pronounce well, it. Well, obviously, I know. I um, know. Phobia is. Like, that? Okay. Just, like, it's that one. I just need this you to one? explain that. Oh, yeah, no. I know yeah. I know this one well. It's yeah. um, hexacosio hexaconta hexaphobia. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. Just, like... It's, it, it does get a lot of people, yeah. but you know, once once you know it, it's easy. Yeah. Um, basically, it's the fear of the number six. Because hex. Yeah. So, like, you know, you might be thinking, oh, number six, how can someone be afraid of a number? True. But it actually comes up everywhere. Like, you think bees, right? Mm -hmm. Honeycomb. It's got six sides. And so people with yeah. hexadexamexophobia, mm -hmm. um, they just don't, they won't eat honey. Oh. They're afraid of bees because... You know they're associated with the number six mm. these people who suffer from hexadecimal phobia mm. they're the ones that you know when you're counting they they can't do it because one two three four five seven exactly and it's such it's it really stunts their like academics and you know it's something really else do they play board games because they have to roll a dice well like, no that's the thing they have to blur it out is because this number triggers mm. such a you know innate response in them um i was speaking to some teachers and they're like it really does affect the learning 
Oh, yeah, how do they do math? They can't. That's the problem. And it's really, that's why this phobia is so important in like, you know, just, it's 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 an issue that's not really looked at enough. What if their name had six letters? Then they, Yeah, Change exactly. Their name, they would have to. Yeah. And last name as well. I reckon, I've heard stories about people moving families because of this innate Jeez, fear yeah. of the number six. That's yeah. crazy. It is quite crazy. And, and you know, how many people is this? Like, what are we talking on a scale? It's actually more common than you'd think. Like, mm. I was just walking the other day and I would turn into, like, um, Sixth Street. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I saw them run the other way. Yeah. Screaming. Imagine if, oh, imagine if someone lived on that. Literally, you, you couldn't you move house. It's it's a debilitating phobia, this one. Have you met someone with it before? Hexadecimal. Probably my guy saw on the street, no. Mm. Like, it was, yeah. It was, Raise awareness for these people. Guys. Maybe really. we should just ban one yeah. or seven. Yeah, well, you know, the devil's number. I mean, I don't want to go there, but yeah, it is, you know, there is evidence behind it. And, I mean, I guess I wouldn't be triggered by, you know, the joke 789, but. Why yeah, that's what of I was, seven. I was gonna say that. Yeah, like people are afraid of six. Maybe yeah. it's like the because it's hiding behind seven's shadow. Mm. Like people think that seven is the six. It sneaks up on you, sneaky six. Is that is that all you have to tell me? That's seven? pretty much in a nutshell. It's just six. Like you can think anywhere that six comes up in life. Yeah, that's the kinda, time. Like imagine time. six thirty. They can't. Never. Five straight to seven. I, I've I've heard there's people with like panic bunkers. You know, six six o'clock. They got to retreat into the bunker or they'll you know lose it yeah just yeah. combust do you want to know what it actually is yeah <laughs> not far off really it's a fear of the number 666 ah! 666 i was close. maybe because it says hex three times in it it's hexacosio hexaconta hexaphobia mm. so it says it three times so it's like fear of number 666 yeah don't know why that's so specific where would you find 666 it's the devil number is it actually? Yeah. Oh. I think, yeah. Maybe this is a legitimate fear. I think so. <laughs> oh, whoops. I really thought it was like a random <laughs> one. But never mind. It's legit. Don't you just, did you not hear everything I said about these people? They can't eat honey. They can't be alive at the six o'clock. They can't o'clock. roll the dice. They can't, they can't do anything. No, dice is definitely bad yeah. for people with hexadecimalation phobia. Yeah. Mm. Well, that was interesting. Yeah. So, you know, hope you learned something. Definitely enjoy teaching you about all that yeah I, i'd just like to say on this i just saw someone's comment under this phobia mm. it was like best phobia ever shame i'll never remember the name and then you can like how many like likes you get on this person like bumps you out it's been bumped up six times <laughs> <laughs> which is really funny for them. yeah how ironic anyway all right yeah okay. so next segment we're pretty we're pretty ex- experted we we are yeah cool. we're very smart we are mm. um but yeah, we're gonna have a look at some other weird phobias we've come across. Yes. Do you want to like, go first, Sarah? Or... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you should. Well, this was another one that I was gonna give you is mm-hmm. ciderophobia. Ciderophobia, like fear of cider. Not fear of stars. Oh. Yeah. So people are. So how do they live? They but just don't look out in the night sky. Mustn't. Yeah. But the sun. That's also a star. Yeah, and then. This one, I'm glad you don't have this phobia because you would not be able to be in the room with me at the moment. Oh, no. But it's um, caligeniophobia, which is the fear of beautiful women. <laughs> so, you know, glad that you don't um, suffer from that. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Imagine, like, we just went up to someone. Oh, my God, get away from me. You're too beautiful. <laughs> That's actually funny. happened to me before, guys. Believe me. Um. So do you have any that you came across? I, I do. These were ones that, you know, I wanted to pick. I have, um, what's, what's, okay. The om- omphalophobia mm. is the fear of belly buttons. Mm. People will avoid seeing or touching belly buttons. I don't know why you would touch anyway. Uh, even their own. They may even put a bandage over their belly button to avoid looking at it. They will sometimes avoid places where belly buttons might be exposed, like the beach. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm. I see, I see. That seems like a not a, not like a genuine phobia, but as in like belly buttons are a bit of a weird thing anyway. Yeah, like I can see that, but I, maybe not a phobia. Like why do we still have them? Like I get they're important when we're born. Yeah, but like it's like a mark, it's like left your legacy. Yeah, yeah. So it's just like legacy. I don't know how it works. Like do humans just grow from the belly button? What? <laughs> like in my mind, well, like the belly buttons. Like, yeah, well, the start of well, no, it starts from like the little cell. It doesn't yeah. start from the belly button. But like. Does that cell, like where it was originally, like attached to like the umbilical cord, and then that grows into a baby from the belly button? 
don't know which way. Like, does the umbilical cord grow from the baby or from? I should know this, but I don't. No one taught us this when we were doing the reproductive. They just thought that it's there. What came first, the baby or the umbilical cord? <laughs> That's, that's a question for the ages. Oh, gosh. Anyways, I found this one, which is called yeah. uh, bogey phobia, which is a fear of the bogeyman, mm. which actually I think is pretty valid. Wait, bogeyman or boogeyman? Bogeyman. Boogeyman? What's same the thing. boogeyman? Isn't that? Same thing. Oh, okay. I think in Australia you say boogies. Yeah, boogeyman. So, I've heard boogeyman. Or is boogeyman the bogeyman's cousin, but he just dances all the time? Who dances? Oh, boogie, right. <laughs> Wait. I swear it was the boogeyman. Like, the, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Boogie, boogie, boogie. That's like, a, I can see that. Like, that could I be like, you know, someone thinking like that's a horror character. Like, hmm. like the boogeyman. Hmm. I can see that being a thing. Hmm. Uh, the next one I have is deepnophobia. Deepnophobia. Yeah. Which is, or dape, I don't know. Uh, fear of dinner parties. Oh, I can see Not that. Not Mrs. Dalloway. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> if you know, you know. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like I guess they fear dinner parties. Whether it's the social, a- social, <laughs> the social aspect, or like I don't know, preparing for it. Who knows? But they're afraid. Of I, I can say that though. Maybe like some sort of social anxiety. Yeah, or, like yeah. if it's like a subcategory of that. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've got um, lin- linenophobia, fear of linen. Linen. Oh, string. Oh, close enough. Yeah. Um, we've got oh, there's your belly buttons one. The yeah. um, pentherophobia, fear of mothers-in-law. Oh, like a feeling. Then, I like, feel like that's a genuine are, thing. Yeah, people <laughs> might be able to relate to that. I, I don't have know. one last funny yeah. one. And this one is just, it's xemiphobia, mm-hmm. fear of the great mole rat. <laughs> I saw that one. What <laughs> is that? The great mole the rat. The great mole rat. Like, it sounds scary, but what? Is it like living, this is why your people are afraid of the rocky planets, is because they house the great mole rat. <laughs> the great mole rat. <laughs> they go hand in hand. Like, what is this? Anyway. Do you have more funny ones? Um, we've got actually we have electrophobia, fear of chickens. I can see chickens are a bit like weird at some point. Well, actually, you I was be afraid of chickens. I was doing a little deep dive into why people have phobias because mm. I don't know. In my mind, it just doesn't make sense how you know people can be afraid of like very afraid to the yeah. point where like you're gonna like I don't know medically suffer if you see it. Mm. So. What I found oh, quite good, quite interesting. Give I us mean, a crash course. Let's give you a crash course, right? You're thinking we're gonna. This is why I have my glasses on today. Is because nerd Carmen is out. Everyone, nerd Carmen is out because <laughs> she's usually never present. <laughs> um. So basically, fear can be expressed innately or often conditioning is triggered. Right. So fear is yeah. triggered when a danger or stimulus is um perceived by a person, mm-hmm. and fear is like. The role of fear is to prepare the body to face this danger, yeah. right? It's like like fight or flight. Yeah. Fight or flight. Wait. Fight. <laughs> fight, fight or, or flight. Fight or flight. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like <laughs> it's basically telling the body, okay, this something yeah. dangerous is happening. I've got to like protect myself from yeah. it. Um, but sometimes like dysfunction in the fear processing can lead to um like the psychiatric disorders and mm. all that kind of stuff. So like when the fear becomes irrational, people yeah. kind of the the irrationality of the fear outweighs the possible like harm imposed yeah. by this like you know chicken or yeah. whatever you're talking about um great mole rat <laughs> the great mole rat you know um and so yeah the body will go there's actually so there's freeze flight fight or fright mm-hmm. so yeah. freeze is um like a big you're one like- as well it's like that's like the above probably fight yeah. or flight is like you just don't know how to react like, yeah. like deer in headlights kind of thing yeah but so kind of like what triggers these fears in people right I found it's actually quite interesting is like so past incidents or traumas can cause these fears mm-hmm. so that you know makes sense. yeah you know certain situations from your childhood mm-hmm. and then you just like if you say you experience a lot of turbulence on a plane okay. at a young age yeah. and then you develop a phobia of flying and yeah. then you're afraid of flying and then you become afraid of everything that you know goes along with it and eventually you're like oh my gosh that chicken's flying I've got a phobia of chickens okay, maybe not quite yeah. that extreme but do you know what I mean yeah like it strings along yeah yeah it's like, so that's kind of one way that they come about or Again, it's a similar learned responses from early life. So maybe you've been mm. told to be cautious of chickens and so then you get scared of chickens. Mm. Or if you have, like, long-term stress, sometimes, like, anxiety, depression, you become, like, you can develop irrational yeah. phobias because your body's just so used to being in that mm. fight or flight response. And then the last interesting one I found is genetic factors. So you oh. can be born with a fear. That's so weird, yeah. So, like, 
like a mutated gene or like genuinely it's like passed down there's a gene that's passed down. i think the gene is like passed ah. down like if your parents they have trypophobia which is the fear of mm. the small holes yeah you're more common to have it have it yeah yeah that is interesting like it's so I, weird how the yeah. brain works sometimes I know. it's like we laugh at it you know make fun of people but it's actually it's like, like real yeah. for them like someone could genuinely like have a heart attack or something from seeing from a chicken a great mole rat <laughs> <laughs> well, i don't know where would they find this great mole rat but you know yes. so yeah um, there are remedies for these phobias as oh, well. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, mainly med- or medicine or exposure therapy. That's a big mm. one. Desensitization. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, and so we're going to do some of that now. Oh, okay. The weirdest fears. Let's see. You're right. Whoosh. Okay, we're back. You got a warning. <laughs> you got a warning. <laughs> this one, this, this phobia is on that Keisha actually kind of has it. I don't know. Okay, I don't think it's a phobia. I just don't like it. Like, yeah. Popping balloons. All right, so this phobia that we have, is uh the fear of balloons don't which is also it. known as uh globophobia you can't pop it randomly it's genuinely well, really like well what we're gonna do <laughs> what we're gonna do i've yeah. had my friend chat gpt here make uh, me up a story which i'd like you to read oh no and then you're and gonna... at one point in the story i'm gonna get our trusty safety pin and pop the balloon i hate this i hate this wait okay let me explain it here right so don't don't pop it now i'm not going to i'm not going to I like for a while I've had this. It's not a fear, but I just don't like the sound of not not the sound, but it just no no don't don't. don't. <laughs> like if it's like it's stop. I'm genuine. I'm genuine. If it's like it's just such a loud sound, it like just I don't know. I don't like like I just don't like it. Right? Like and I like every time I remember as a kid we had those like like somebody comes in, don't don't you dare. Somebody comes in to like play with balloons. I literally had to like leave the like leave the room i stopped i had to like leave the room because i didn't want to hear it like i was like i started crying i remember at one point that's when i was little even now though i still don't like it like i don't like the like especially if it pops in my face like if you like okay i just don't like it so this is but like if i saw you putting the pin to it and doing it i might be better but randomly i don't like it and that's so on that note here's a story i don't know i'm gonna say this okay Okay. Kyla, I didn't expect her to actually be this scared. No, because no, because I just <laughs> Okay, okay. Please, please. You got, I, I suggest my, watching this segment of the podcast. My, I need my I need my comfort. Like I need to like Stop laughing. She's huddled on her chair. Okay, okay, okay. Once upon a time. I don't know if I should look or not look. Just read like, the story. Worse. <laughs> like what's worse? It's for you. Okay. Once upon a time in the quirky land of Warrington, there lived a mole rat. <laughs> there lived a mole rat named Morty. What? <laughs> She's so scared. Come Mor- on. Morty was like your average mole rat. He was the great mole rat, self-proclaimed. Of the- oh my god, that was so <laughs> He had a magnificent molehill that stood out like a majestic mountain in the middle of the borough community. What he was known for his love of adventure and peculiar sense of humour. One day, he decided to throw a grand underground party and invite all the borough residents. The word spread like wildfire, or in this case, like a rapid mole digging through soft soil. At the day, as the day the party arrived, Mort- Morty donned his finest mole vector. What is this story? Complete with a tiny monocle that that magnified his already large mole eyes. The moment was buzzing with excitement as everyone gathered around Morty's magnificent mole. <laughs> <laughs> Um, traumatic experiences maybe there is some sort of traumatic maybe i was like maybe i was i don't even know born amongst a bomb or something <laughs> who knows like i have like just oh anyway okay it wasn't terrible it wasn't terrible you gotta finish the story for us. oh okay sorry yeah we're continuing morty's journey i honestly have not i don't know what's happening it. because i haven't registered it oh the entrance is a tiny tunnel adorned with this is a really long story Basically, Morty has a little party, and then Morty showcased his hidden talents. He had a magic show. He crowned the mole of the night with a trophy. He had his little mole. This is combining a mole at a dinner party. Oh, 
Oh, two fears at once. Look at that. Or some sort of party. I'll read the end. And so in the heart of the underground world, Morty's mole hole... M- M- <laughs> what? Morty's mole hill stood as a symbol of laughter and camaraderie. Joy that could be found in the unlikeliest of places. The great mole rat had indeed created a legendary night that would be passed down by oh wait, through borrowed generations, ensuring that Morty's name would be remembered with smiles and giggles for years to come. Mm. Whenever I hear Morty now, I'm going to be afraid. <laughs> Morty the great mole rat. <laughs> Not the mole rat. <laughs> She's got, oh. what was it? Z- well, Z- you know that thing you're talking about, how like one fear could lead to another? Yeah. Maybe now I'll have a fear of giant yeah, mole rats. Okay. What is it called again? I forgot what it was called. Dictnophobia, is that it? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. I think that was it. So yeah, that's yeah. that fear. I'm and... it, guys. I'm so brave. Whoosh. Okay, the next phobia we're going to be facing i don't know if it'll be that's quite near as because, entertaining as that because you don't have anything that you're afraid of so you're not going to get scared of anything. i'm just you know scared. Scared. thanks cool. she threw an avocado at me but oh, yeah aha uh-huh. um no i don't really have any phobia phobias fear is a mindset you can get over it that's... i can't get over my balloon fear <laughs> <Not just laughs> no, after now definitely not no it's not fear i don't i still don't think it's a fear i just think it's i don't like it <laughs> flashback to like two minutes ago i don't i don't i'm not afraid of it i just don't like it yeah okay anyways the phobia that we're facing now is hippopotomonstrosexpedophobia it's not the fear of hippos is it no it's fear of long words uh, yeah because it's quite long um so we're gonna take turns trying to pronounce these long words. Okay, go. Yep. I, I reckon you go first because okay, I just so. had to battle with that one. Is so. this the longest word? Because I know it's like a medical thing. New wait, pneumono ultra microscopic silica volcano wait vo- wait. I just like have lost because there's so many volcanoconiosis. Forty five letters. Wow. A lung disease caused by the inhalation of silica or quartz dust. I'm actually impressed. You pronounce that quite well. I kind of I get lost halfway through the word and then I just start making that, it that up. end bit was like, it went like, oh, no, 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 like, volcano, so many... Yeah, see, it has yeah. so many repetitions that I got confused. Right. Okay. This one, 30 letters, is pseudo, pseudo hyperthyroidism. Oh. Which I'm assuming is a mild form is in, of inherited pseudo hyperthyroidism that simulates the symptoms of the disorder but isn't associated with the abnormal levels of calcium. I didn't understand a word that you just said. <laughs> Me neither, and I was reading it. <laughs> Basically, it's some sort of like blood disorder. Oh, okay. Pseudo. Su- su- They're all medical side. ones. They really just yeah. want to like bunch it all together. Blocky now. It seems like a sin instead of a kin. Yeah. Sinny hilly pillification. <gasps> I, one of our friends told me about this word or about yeah. something in English. They were looking at it and she just like has just remembered this word now. Wow. Yeah. 29 letters. The estimation of something as valueless. Ironically, that word is a pretty valueless word itself. It's almost never used except as an example of a long word. <laughs> okay. Oh, this is so ironic. Oh, I know how to say this one. Is it super califragilistic? Oh. Anti disestablishmentarianism. Boom. Maybe that is the word. Year three Carmen was the oh, coolest yes. person in her class because she knew how to say that word. I think her definition of cool is very subjective. No, was that another thing when you knew, like, year three, four? It was like everyone would go and be like, oh, I know how to spell supercalifragilistic, expialidocious, and oh, I can spell anti disestablishmentarianism, or like, I know what the longest word is, and then they'll say that word. No. Well, then your school sucks. <laughs> no, actually, I think, yeah, supercalifragilistic, expialidocious, you went by, but I remember singing a song about it. Like, you know the song? Super well. I was going to say, let's do the next word, but the next one is supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, which at one point I didn't know how to spell by yes. memory. Me S-U-P-E-R-C-A-L-I-F-R-A-G-I-L-I-S-C-I-C-E-X-P-I-A-L-I-D-I-C-I-O-U-S. See, I didn't actually memorise it. I actually worked it out. Like, I went through the word and sounded it out and worked it out. And I memorised. Do you see what I mean by how cool I was? I'm pretty sure I may have spelled that wrong, but do you see how cool I was? Let please someone like humble her like <laughs> whoosh. Next one is vestophobia, which is the fear of clothing. So we're gonna strip. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Wait. Whoosh. Our next phobia. Yeah. Is decidophobia, or fear of making decisions. See, that's that's that makes sense. Yeah. Decidophobia, decisions, decisions. Yeah. So I mean. 
I definitely count myself as a very decisive person. I have no issues just making the decision on the spot. Mm -hmm. Uh, Would you say you're decisive? I'd say it depends on the situation. Like, sometimes, like, I can be. Mostly because I'm not bothered to think about it and make a decision. Like, I'll be, yeah, whatever, I'll go with that. But if it was something like, uh, I don't know, yeah, it's usually the unimportant things that it's, like, the indecisive stuff. But if it's important, I'm pretty decisive. Yeah. Well, I want to test that now. I've got some this or that questions for you. And we're going to, you know, quick fire, see if you can make some snap decisions. Wait, am I saying this or that? Like, Or, like, you, I'll give you an option or this option and you've got to pick one. Um, And, yeah, we'll see if you have decided for Okay, let's go. Okay, so, cronuts or cruffles? What? <laughs> cronuts or cruffles? Are cronuts croissant donuts? I think so. And cruffles are cr- croissant waffles? I'm assuming so. Cronuts? Cronuts? No. That's the problem. I don't know these things. <laughs> no, but I can't decide. I genuinely don't know what I didn't even read this before. I'm like, what is this? All right, I think these ones okay. Okay. Beachside resort or hillside cottage? Beachside resort. Mm-hmm. I would say the same. TV series or movies? TV series. Mm-hmm. Arctic or tropical? Tropical. Mm-hmm. Cruffle or charcoal ice cream? What? <laughs> what is with cruffles? Cruffles, I guess? Mm-hmm. Um, matching or mismatched socks? Mismatched socks. Even well, though I wear but like mismatched socks. Take out or dine out? Take out. <laughs> <laughs> Trivia night or board game night? <gasps> board game night. Board game night? Yeah. Board game? you can do a board game, but a trivia board game, mm. like Trivial Pursuit or something. I love Trivial yes. Pursuit. Okay. Board games or card games? Board games. Video games or books? Video games. <laughs> Who reads? Oh, I reckon books are good. I'd rather play a video game. <laughs> okay, hot weather or cold weather? Oh no, now this is this is the issue <laughs> because I don't like either. Guys, nah, she's got it. She's got decidophobia. No, no, no. This isn't about like because I don't like both. Like extreme hot or extreme cold. If you had to be stuck in one or the other, which one would you pick? With unlimited resources. Oh, unlimited resources. So like I could just stay in an air conditioned place in the heat. No, but like you could have as many items of clothing as you wanted or something or like you could have a pool yeah okay extreme heat then heat yeah okay, so our last phobia of the day okay is iraqi beauty rophobia or the fear of peanut butter sticking to the roof of your mouth so what we're going to be doing i have we're going to stick some peanut butter in our mouth and i've got a few um tongue twisters oh no got some for me two for me two for you and oh. we'll see if we can say them with All right. that big spoon of peanut butter in our mouth and come back with whoosh All right <clears throat> we're back we are back. Here is a spoon, my friend. Thank and you. let's just take a big old glob of peanut butter. <laughs> Try and get a healthy amount so that we can stick it to the roof of our I mouth. I don't know if I want to eat that much peanut. That's a lot of peanut butter. Well, we got to full send it to the I pot, right? I don't know if I want to eat that. All right. I'm going to say my two. And then <laughs> that's weak. For those listening, she literally took like the tip of the spoon. And then she just flicked it all over her face. All right, I think what I'll do, I'll do mine first and then okay. you do yours. All oh. right? So just, just hold on to the spoon. Just hold on to that. All right, ready? <laughs> Wait, do you have to like sit? Do you have to sit it at the top of your mouth? Yeah. How what? do you keep it there? With your tongue? Okay, oh, okay, okay, got it. <laughs> <laughs> Go. This is a lot of okay. butter. Should I try and guess what you're saying or something? Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. I'll do one, do one. I see you watching Fuzzy Wuzzy was a bear. Fuzzy Wuzzy had no hair. Fuzzy Wuzzy was a bear. I'm not going to look. Don't spell. Like... Okay. You want me to say again? Yeah. F- wait. Fuzzy Wuzzy was a bear. Fuzzy Wuzzy had a hair. Fuzzy Wuzzy was the mayor. Fuzzy Wuzzy wasn't there. Fuzzy Wuzzy. Fuzzy Wuzzy wasn't Fuzzy Wuzzy. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> Did I get the rest of it right? Mm-hmm. Oh. The shit. 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 What did you say? I said, this is a PG rated podcast comment. Just shit. 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 The six sick sheep. Six. Six sheep. Six. Six. Wait. Six sheep. Six. Okay. That didn't make sense, but sure. Oh. No, I'm not eat my peanut butter. That's disgusting. How are you just eating it? I saw it. <laughs> I saw it. This street. This street. I saw it. And on this little street, I saw it. <laughs> you take what? <laughs> say it again. Say it again. I saw it. This street. This street. I saw it. 
And on the floor of C or C. <laughs> I sound like a Sesame Street. <laughs> Sesame Street character. So for those um who didn't understand, that was I slit the sheet, the sheet I slit, and on the slitted sheet I sit. I want to eat this. <laughs> I know what you did. <laughs> right, go for it. A lot of <laughs> a lot of <laughs> a lot of <laughs> a lot of presents. <laughs> I'm a present for the sun. But a people <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, I was hoping I'd get you. Mm-hmm. I'm mean, so slow. Oh my gosh, for those who didn't um hear that, it's I'm not a pheasant plucker, I'm a pheasant plucker's son, but I'll keep on plucking pheasants till the pheasant plucker comes. Imagine what you will that could go wrong there, but Keisha uh-huh. seems to take it like a champ. She did well. I need water. I oh, know, me too. I reckon that's it for today on the phobias. Oh. I hope you enjoyed us facing fears, trying other people's fears, um, the story of Morty the Great Mole Rat, and we'll see you next week. This is DJ Cumin and MC Key signing out. Good night.